You're not supposed to use an impact. I'm going to say it again. You're not supposed to use an impact. What's up, Speedy's Garage Gang? Welcome back to the Speedy's Garage YouTube channel. This video, I originally intended to include it with the lower ball joint replacement video on Project Sport Runner, but there was enough going on in that video and ended up being a little bit longer than I expected. So I decided to break out the suspension portion where I made the adjustment to the Bilstein, Bilstein, however you say it, 5100 shocks. I've got the Tundra 5100s with the Tundra coils and I had it on the lowest setting. And since I was pulling the ball joints out anyway, I thought I would raise it up one notch or one perch to level the truck out. I had about a half inch rake front to back and my calculations suggested that going up to that second notch would probably be the ideal height. This video is me changing that setting. I thought it would be easy and boy, was I wrong? I don't know if I'm doing something wrong when I work on the suspension. I remember 10 years ago when I put that suspension on the truck, it was pretty difficult. The back, no problem. The front with the, uh, with the independent front suspension and the height, the higher or taller strut, it just gave me a lot of trouble. If I'm doing something wrong, leave me a comment and let me know what the secret is because this was a lot of work. I'm gonna show you that now. That's why it's a separate video. If you're just doing lower ball joints, skip ahead a little bit. I'm going to take out this strut because I want to make a suspension adjustment. And with the ball joint out, now is the best time to do it because this strut's a little bit hard, especially a lifted one, is a little bit hard to get back in the truck because of the height. I'm going to start by loosening up these 14 millimeter top nuts, but I'm not going to take them out, just loose. Back one back there, I have to use a socket on, or a wrench rather. My box wrench is pretty short, so I've hooked two of them together to get some leverage. Remember, leverage is your friend. I think I got it broke loose that time. A little tight in this for some reason. Now that I got it broken loose, I can get after it with a ratchet or wrench. Actually, that one might unthread by hand. A little bit. There we go. All right, those are loose. I'm going to go after the bottom one. And it is 19 millimeter. Here's where you kind of got to be a little bit careful. This bolt is under tension and you can strip the threads pretty easily. I don't have a spare with me, so I'm gonna have to be extra careful. I might end up putting a pry bar under the shock to take tension off that bolt to see if I can make it a little easier to work with. And I am gonna hit it with some penetrating oil just to try to help it along. Oh, that worked a treat. <laughs> oh yeah. No damage. Now I just remove the three top nuts. I've removed two already, so I've got this hanging by one. And be ready because it is a little bit heavy. And this will just slide right out. So these are the Tundra Bill Stein 5100 shocks and Tundra TRD coils. Um, Yellow, yellow for driver's side, yellow, blue for passenger side. Well-known lift combination that I like because it uses factory Toyota parts. And on the third gen Foreigner Gibbs, 
uh, depending on where you set your perches, these are adjustable shocks, you know, around two inches of lift, if it's like this, I'm gonna move mine up one perch. Um, it's got a little bit of a rake to it. Some people like that. <clears throat> I actually want mine more level. And now that I'm fooling with the suspension and the, and the lower ball joints, I figured now's as good a time as any, I'm just gonna leave it this way, to, uh, to make that change. Not a huge deal. I'm suspecting I'll get three-eighths of an inch difference. That's it, but that's really all I need based on taking measurements. Now this is one of my least favorite things to fool with because this coil's under a lot of tension, a lot of pressure, and what we have to do is put this coil spring compressor, if you're watching this channel, I'm sure you've seen one of these before, and then crank on it to basically compress the spring even more so that we can work with the shock. I might get lucky and be able to compress the spring enough that I don't have to take off the top nut to take the shock out. All I need to do is, is squish it down enough so that I can move this collar up enough to move the lock ring that's underneath it. We'll see how it goes. I am going to make index marks for where everything lines up and I'm gonna to try to put the shock back together in the exact same orientation because that's how it came off the truck. So if those marks line up, I know where the top is because of where the spring perch made an indention in that rubber. We should be good to go. Now to hook these things up, uh, let's see, this is the threaded end. So it's gonna go down here. Find a coil it'll fit on and then kind of walk it around until it gets tight. And you want them as far apart as you can get them because uh, it'll give you the most clamping force. So there, we'll call that good right there. And then the bottom are a sleeve, they're not threaded. So the idea is you can move a little quicker with it. And you want the bolts facing the bottom so you can get a wrench on it. And I lube mine up with motor oil. I figure a little bit would help keep the threads cool and make it a little easier to use. And then we just get the, let's see, start point. Now if these get hung up and start aggravating you, hammer's your best friend there. Yeah, these things are fiddly and kind of a, see it's locked up again, kind of a pain in the ass. Oh crap, now this thing's locked down. Look at that. This is why I hate these, you know, these stupid things. Now I'm gonna have to get a pry bar to pry that out of there. Three. There we go. Gee, I'm, I'm getting rid of that. It's supposed to be a safety lock, but they won't fit on here anyway. So y'all get to watch me fight with this thing for a minute. Right, that one feels good. This one in. It's gonna have to go there to be straight. I'm gonna snug this up. You wanna check it to make sure these two clamps are right across from each other. Now we're gonna put the other side on. All right, so you want them horizontal to each other, just like that. And now you just tighten a few turns on this side, tighten a few turns on this side, and it will compress the spring. This is a 19 millimeter, like I said. You're supposed to do it like this. You're not supposed to use an impact. I'm gonna say it again. You're not supposed to use an impact.
All right, I am not, I can tell now, these threaded rods are already starting to get a little unhappy and I don't want to take any chances. I've got that, I've got that loose so the shock will now move. I am going to have to loosen the top nut. Try to set this around so y'all can see how that's done. Be careful with this thing, guys, if you're, if you're working on it. No, all, all kidding aside, um, these are, you know, it is dangerous. I'm going to lock this on here. Give it a couple of. Ah, put the wrench on first, numb nuts. All right, that is. Yeah, that's good there. Now we should be able to. Let's see. Oops. Got to put this. Go this way with it. And this is the most dangerous part. So when you start taking this top nut off, that spring better be better be locked down good. So you see I'm keeping my hand kind of away from it. And once you get the top nut loose, just slide this bushing off. I like to keep the washer and everything in the order it came off, and then the top spacer. Pay attention to where the spring was, that's how you're going to put it back together. And now the spring and the shock are separated. So I'm not going to take it completely out because I'm trying to keep it oriented the same. But you can see now that I've slid the shock down out of the perch, I can get to the lock ring. And all I'm going to do is use some lock ring pliers to open it up so I can move it up one perch. Actually, let's see. There we go. That is one perch. And I measured those and they are exactly 10 millimeters apart, which is about 3 8 and I've seen some mistakes when people put these together. They'll have this perch upside down. It should slide down over the lock ring. You shouldn't have this side on the lock ring. I hope that's clear. Now we're gonna reassemble the shock, paying attention to the index marks that I made, make sure the perch, the spring, and the shock all line up. I'm gonna put the top hat back on and make sure the spring lands in the same spot on it. That's all locked in. I'm gonna get the bushing and the washer installed. I'm gonna go ahead and start the 19 millimeter top nut. I like to have that on there when this spring's under tension. That just be a bad day. That thing flew apart. All right, turn the shock. That all lines up. Now I'm going to retighten the top nut. I think this gets torqued to 18 foot pounds, so not a ton. Eventually, the shaft will start turning, and you have to lock onto it with a uh, pair of vice grips. I'm going to stop there until I get my torque wrench out. Notice my isolator lines up. Shock body lines up with the index mark, so I'm pretty happy with all of that. I'm going to start releasing tension on these compressors.
check everything out, make sure the spring didn't move in the rubber seat up top. Shock body matches up with our index marks. I can take these the rest of the way off and get that back in the truck. Voila. Hopefully that goes in easy. And I paid attention when I took this out, so I'm putting the spring perch back in the same spot where I removed it. It was facing towards the front. Or I'm sorry, out towards the side. Front was the driver's side. That's the same. I'm gonna start top nuts. And hopefully you didn't forget to torque your top nut to 18 foot-pounds. I've heard some people can do it in the car. Um, it would help because it holds it in place, but I did it on the workbench and just used a um, pry bar between the studs to hold it still. All right, it took me a minute to find the right leverage to get this lower bolt started. I pried down with a big pry bar on the bump stop until I could get some wood shoved in there to hold the A-arm down, the lower A-arm. Then I used a shorter pry bar to come in here, come underneath, and start manipulating the shock to get the bolt hole to line up, and use a long screwdriver to help from the front side. If I sound winded, it's because I am. I'm hoping, now that I've got it pretty well started, I can just use this pry bar, get it to go the rest of the way through. It was going pretty good. All right. That's like super close. Hate these bolts. They are my nemesis. Alright, last little bit. I'm just gonna have to tap it. Oh, that was a workout. The washer and the nut. This one's 101 foot pounds. Man, that was good. Top nuts, 47. Put some tension on the suspension so I can get that lower shock bolt and it is 101 foot pounds and it's 19 millimeter. And here is how the spring is oriented on the shock. This is passenger side. The perch is pointing directly out and this actually matches the factory service manual. I don't know that it 100% matters, but what you gotta watch out for is the spindle up here, some light on that, contacting one of the coils. Now this is at full droop, nothing under the, under the A-arm or anything, and you can see I, I got plenty of room. So what happens is as the A-arm moves up, the um, spindle moves out. So that's the closest it will ever be. And I did cycle the suspension with the jack to make sure it was good. And on the driver's side, the perch faces forward. This seemed to work best with the bottom perch and the second perch. I've never had any contact or anything that I've ever heard. So I put it back in that same orientation. Now, if I were to turn this to match what the factory service manual you know, stipulates, that coil would turn and I'm afraid it would make contact right there. So your mileage may vary, but that's how mine's set up. So I just got back from a pretty uneventful test drive. Um, changing the shock perch from the first one to the second one, if someone hadn't told me something had been done to the truck, I wouldn't have noticed it from a ride, the way it rides. Um, it's still almost the same. If, if Now I was looking for stuff, I had the radio off and I was listening for noises and clangs and bangs. It might be just a tick firmer, but I've never minded that. It's not like it's jarring or harsh or rough, at least to me. Um, I've never minded that, that suspension set up, and it feels almost exactly the same from that perspective. Now let's see how much, um, how much extra lift we got. I'm going to look. I took notes <clears throat> previously, and of course how much fuel you have in the tank and all that kind of stuff matters, but before the front left, which would be driver's side, was 21 and a half. 
and rear left was 22 and a quarter. So let's take a look, see what driver's side is now. This is a little tricky to measure. I always do it from the, try to get as close to the center of the wheel hub as I can. That's about center. Looks like 22 and an eighth to me. I'll let you guys see that. That's about 22 and an eighth, right? About dead center of the hub. And what I was really going for is to uh, level it out. So let's see what the rear says. And it looks like right at 22, whoops, right at 20, right at 22. So maybe an eighth of an inch. And that might settle over time, I don't know. But that's what it looked like. Now let's take a look at the uh, CV joints, see if they changed. All right, there's the outer with it sitting flat. I don't see any ribs touching, that's good. The inner one is usually the one that gives people trouble. There's, there's that one. That fin, that's close, but I'd say there's probably two millimeters of gap between that fin and that fin, but that's only where, only place it's even close. But it is not touching, so that's good news. Let's check the, uh, this is passenger side, let's check the driver. There's the outer, I'll try to get that shadow out of there. No fins touching that I see. Let's check the inner. That one again, it's close, but it is not touching that I can tell. I'll have to keep an eye on it just to make sure, but I don't really see it touching. Probably a couple of millimeters. So, whoops, get that shadow out of the way. I can see that a little bit better. That's what it looks like. So I'm gonna have to, just have to watch it and see, but I can see light through it, so that's good news. Okay, so getting the struts out, no problem. I can have both struts out of the truck in probably 20 to 30 minutes, including jacking the truck up, super easy. A little bit of leverage, get that lower shock bolt out, no problem. It's putting it back in. You know, you gotta think, you're working on a piece of suspension that's taller than what was originally designed to fit in there. And I don't know if I need to maybe loosen the lower control arm bolt or something to let that control arm lower down more. Disconnect, disconnecting the ball joint, I thought would be the trick. It wasn't for me, it really made almost no difference. So I gotta be missing something. So again, leave me a comment and let me know what I'm missing. You saw on the video that the, um, I probably ended up with about two and a half inches of lift. It was already two and a half inches in the back. Now I've got two and a half inches in the front. It was originally just two inches, but I wanted it level. I've, I've solved that. So with some settling and with an alignment, it ended up being right at half an inch of lift going up that one spring or one, that one uh, yeah, spring perch or shock perch. And the shock perch measures 10 millimeters. So 10 millimeters equates to about a half inch of lift, at least on my 2002 Forerunner. And I'm super happy with how it turned out after all is said and done. If it's that difficult all the time and there is no trick, I'm not ever doing that again. It was just a lot of work when I first put the suspension on. It was a lot of work doing it again, taking the strut out, taking you know 15 minutes per side. And it was probably, on the video it's shorter, but I probably fought with that lower shock bolt probably an hour, maybe an hour and a half. So if there's not a trick to that, and doing it on jack stands just creates some kind of, you know, put you at a disadvantage. I'm gonna take it to a four by, <laughs> four by four shop next time and just say, hey, adjust this or install this and call me when it's done because it was way too much work and it was honestly kind of dangerous. I'm in there with a pry bar, trying to cram that thing in there. I'm trying to get a lower shock bolt started and the whole time I'm praying that it doesn't chop my fingers off when something slips. So that's it, I got it adjusted, it's now right. You saw the um, angle of the uh, axle and the inner, the inner boot is what usually gives trouble. The outer boots usually aren't a problem, but the inner axle boots, you saw that mine have probably two millimeters and after the alignment I've now had done, it's about three millimeters, so I've got plenty of room there. So about, a two and a half inch lift, maybe a little bit more than that, maybe two and five eighths is about the maximum you're probably gonna to wanna to go on one of these and not have problems with boots and stuff like that. So that's it. I hope you enjoy the video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Be sure to check us out on Instagram. It's at speedies underscore garage, as well as the website, www.speediesgarage.net. And hopefully I'll see you out there. We got a whole lot more coming 
from Project Sport Runner, so stay tuned.